G'day, welcome back to Kieran's Training. So now that we've done our pre-start checks on the crane, what we're going to now look at is we're going to do some post-start checks. So they're the checks you're going to make after you start the crane. Once we do that, we're going to look at putting the crane into position and we'll go through the setup process. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we'll work our way down to the cab. Okay, keeping in mind we've just completed our pre-start. So what we want to do next is do our post-start. So we'll jump in the cab. Okay, here we go. We chat around. So the key thing to remember is look at everything in front of you. All right, what are you going to check? You're going to check everything. Okay, well, I'll go through this before I start it up. Otherwise, you're more than likely not going to hear me. All right, but once you start it up, all right, right in front of you, you've got your steering wheel. Gives you a hint you can check your steering. Here, you've got your horn. Steering, horn. Okay, if you look through here, once you start it, check all your gauges. Be pretty embarrassing to run out of fuel. So make sure you check all your gauges. On the stalk, you've got your lights. Make sure you check all your lights. Now it does help if you have the assistant of a doggy with you. He can stand, walk around on the outside as you're going through it. Okay, over this side, We've got our uh, wipers, so we can check them as well. Okay, down to the floor, we've got our accelerator, got our brake, got our clutch. So we're going to check all them. Okay, work over here. Okay, we've got all, all our diff locks, etc. Ordinarily, you're not going to need them a great deal, but we do have our uh, um, flashing lights, we've got our fog lights, etc. We want to make sure we can check all them as well. Okay, down here we've got our PTO. Got our gears here and we've got our handbrake, all right? So after you start, you'll go through and you're going to start all them, all right? So we've gone through, we've checked all them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at getting the crane into position. So let's take a look. Okay, so we'll go for a wander over here and we'll see exactly where we're going to put the crane. So, what we're going to look at... I'll just, okay, so I'm going to set up the crane um, ready for the next course. Alright, so we're going to, in this course, we're going to pick up these panels from here. Okay, and we need to put them down over here. Now, when you're going to set up the crane, you'd step out what your distances are and look at your load chart and decide how far you can throw them. Okay, in this instance, our heaviest load is five and a half ton. And when I go to my load chart, it's gonna tell me my maximum radius is going to be 12 meters. Okay, so you can see where I've had it set up previously, pretty much where these timbers are here. Okay, so I'm gonna set it up pretty much in here where that is, which is roughly 11 meters from either side. Okay. Right. So we'll get it into gear, release the handbrake, okay, and we'll start coming back. Right. Just watching out for this stand. Right. Nice and steady. All right, and I think that should just about do us. Get on. 
Alright. So, always a good idea to get out and just double check everything, make sure everything's good. Alright, because remember before setting up the crane, you want to make sure the crane is in the right position. Make sure um, the radius of the lift is within your capacities and make sure you're also clear of any obstructions or hazards. Okay, now that um, we've got the crane all in position, what we need to do is we need to engage the PTO in order to transfer the power from the bottom deck to the top deck. Now, in most cranes, the gearbox will have to be in neutral in order to do it. This one in particular, best uh, I found to operate in is in third low and engage the PTO in third low. Okay, so we've got our PTO down here, we've got our gears here, and we've got our high and low selector here. So low is going down. Okay, so in order to get into third low, push the clutch in, put it into third, we can pull the PTO out, and we can release the clutch. Okay. And if you push down on the accelerator, you'll find you've got no power in the top deck again. All right, so let's go out and do this. Okay, now that we're in position, okay, what we want to do is we want to get the crane set up. All right, so the setup is probably one of the most critical parts of operating a crane. There's two things you can do to make sure this crane remains stable while you're operating it. Number one, make sure it's set up right as per manufacturer specifications. The other one is make sure you operate it within capacity. Okay, so if you make sure it's set up right and you don't overload it, everything should be pretty good. Okay, so let me just look at what we're doing. Okay, now these old truck mount cranes, let me just come back. So these old truck mount cranes, so they're set up slightly different to a lot of what you're going to see nowadays. Okay, so what you're going to find on a lot of modern day all-terrain cranes, when you're setting them up, you basically want to push your outriggers out, you want to touch a bit of weight down on each outrigger, and then you'll start lifting it up. These all-terrains, however, uh, sorry, these truck mounts, however, so not just your zoom line here, but your old Kato's, Tadano's, those sorts of cranes, what you typically want to do, you want to push your outriggers out, then you want to lift your front end up. Once you've got your front end up, then you can lift your back up to meet it, and then you can adjust side to side as you need to. Now, the reasoning behind that is what you don't want to do, these don't have the hydraulic suspension like you'll find on all your modern cranes. So, what you've got to worry about is you don't want to damage anything on your front steering components. So, best way to avoid that, lift the front first, bring up the back to meet it, and then adjust side to side as need be. Okay, so let's go have a look at it. Now you've got to remember when you're pushing the outriggers out or if you're sucking them in, only do the side you're standing on. You don't want to be working blind. If you're pushing it out and there's an obstruction or something in the way, all right, you don't want to be hitting it. When you're sucking it in, you want to make sure there's no one there leaning over it, there's nothing being left on your outriggers. So in or out, only the side that you're standing on. Now let's, okay. So here we've got our controls. These particular ones, they're color coded. So we can see on this side we're standing on, we've got green for the front, we've got purple for the back. Yellow's the other side, and blue's the back rear. Okay, now if we have a look along here, if we push it up, right, that works as horizontally. If you push them down, that works your vertical rams. Now before we push them out, what we want to make sure of, we've got to make sure that we have pulled all our outrigger pins out. Okay, so if we walk around, have a look down here. You can see we've got our outrigger pin. Make sure they're all out. Okay, so we'll work our way all the way around. I'm right, making sure all four of them are out. Just like that. Back around to this side. Slide them out. And we'll slide that one out. Okay. 
Okay, now, <clears throat> while you might think while I'm over this side, I can start on this side. So, what I've got to keep in mind is, well, I know this ground, I know the side I'm currently on is a high side. Now, it's a good idea to, when you're jacking it up, to finish on the high side. That way, you know, if your wheels are clear of the ground on the high side, then they're going to be clear on the other side as well. So I'll work my way back around to the low side and I'll start there. Okay, around. Okay, so here we go. Right, we've got green and we've got purple on this side and we're going to control the speed with this one. Okay, now if you want some extra revs as you're pushing them out, We've got a little control knob here, which is going to speed up the red. All right. Make sure you put your controls back to neutral. Okay. All right. Now, what you'll see, you'll see these yellow marks on the end of your outriggers. Okay, that indicates that they're all the way out. Okay, now the other thing you want to do while you're here is you want to make sure all your timbers are in position. Okay, so looks like I didn't do too bad of a job with lining it up with where it was. Okay, so the timbers over here, so you'll notice I've got them pig side, as I said previously, this is the lower side, which is why I've got the pig side packing on here. Remember when they're pig side, the second layer is going to be 90 degrees to the first. Okay. All right, so we've got that one. All right, and it's a little bit lower at the back here. All right, so we'll get these ones lined up. All right. Okay, now that we're over this side, so the same process as the other side. Right, except now we've got, for this side, we have blue for the back one, yellow for the front one. Okay, so lift them up in order to go in and out. You'll find on the old Kalos and Tadanos, they may not be colour-coded, but what a lot of operators and a lot of companies will do, uh, they'll tend to put a couple of bits of insulation tape around that particular side. So if it's on these two, you know it'll be these two. So up is for in and out. Remember the red one at the end here, that controls our direction. Okay, and we'll give this a turn for a few extra reds. Okay. So we can see our yellow line there. Oh, where are we? Okay, so we can see it's all the way out. So we'll make sure we check our timbers. So always make sure you check your timbers before you go jacking it up. Right. Jump on the back ones. Yeah, make sure they're all in place. All right, so let's get it jacked up. As I said, when we're going to jack it up, we want to bring the front up first, and then we're going to bring the back up to meet it. So we've got green and yellow. We're going to push them down in order to operate the jacks. And our red one controls the direction. So push it down, pushes the rams down. Okay. okay. Once the front's in the air, then we're gonna start bringing the back up. So, as I bring the back up, I'll bring you over here. You can keep an eye on the bubble level, all right? Because we want to make sure everything's nice and level. Okay. We can see, coming slowly there. All right. So there we go. Our bubble level is in that center there. Now, keep in mind, so when you've got the crane set up, it's got to be plus or minus one degree. Now, once it's set up, all right, first thing I'm make sure my wheels are off the ground. Okay. So this wheel happens to be our high side. I know that one's clear, so if I look under there, right, I can see 
all the rest of them are nice and clear of the ground. Okay, put our controls back to normal. Now, before I go and put the front outrigger down, before I go and put the front outrigger down, what I want to do is I'm going to walk around the crane again. I'm going to make sure that all the outrigger pins are in, and I'm just going to double check that all the outriggers do actually have weight on them. As I come around, put that in. All right, now to check the weight on the outriggers. All right, you can see down here. Now, if there's a gap there, you know there's no weight on it. All right, but it's also a good idea just to give your timbers a bit of a kick and just try and give that a bit of a shake. All right, now it's a very good habit. Now, it doesn't matter whether I'm driving this crane or if I'm driving the 450. Regardless of what the outrigger pressures are going to tell me on the screen, I always make it a habit just to double check. Okay, so, walking around, put that one in. Give that a kick, give that a pull. Right. On this last one, got that one, and we've got that one. Okay, so now the reason I do that before I put that fifth hour rigger down is that if I find that one of them is a little bit loose, right, and I need to adjust things, I don't want to do that while that front hour rigger's down. Very easily damaged. Okay, so now that they're all fine, we'll come over and we'll do that front hour rigger. So front hour rigger, right, so if we have a look, okay, that's our orange one. So it's a ram, so rams are always down. Okay, and we will start pushing that down. Now, as it comes down, it's always good to pause and just take a look and make sure that that timber is in the right place as well. Okay, so there we are. We've got the crane all set up nice and level. We've double checked that our timbers are right. We've double checked that we've got weight on all our outriggers. All five outriggers are down. So the next step we're going to do, we're going to jump in the crane and we're going to look at getting the boom out of the cradle. Once again, the crane you're driving is going to be different to this one, but the basic principles are going to remain the same. They may have different computers, they may have other systems in place, but at the end of the day, what we want to do, whenever we jump in there, once we get power to the top cab, we want to lift our boom up. If your hooks are attached to the front, you want to free them. So boom up, rope down, free the hooks. Keep booming up. When you can see the bottom of the hooks, you can rope each hook down, okay, just till they come off your two block weights. Once they come off the two block weights, you can test them individually just to ensure both hook blocks are working correctly. Okay, so here we go, we'll jump in the top cab. Okay, here we are in the top cab. Okay, so I'll just flick the screen around so you can have a bit of a look around. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing we need to do when we get in the top cab, we need to get the power up here. Okay, as I said, all the cranes are going to be slightly different. In this instance, we've got a power button. You can just press that there. And we'll notice our screen will come up. Okay, the alarm will go off because at the moment we are currently past our hoist limit switches. Okay, so let me just into that. Ah, that's better. All right, now ordinarily you wouldn't turn that off. Okay, just gonna make it a little bit easier for me to um, tell you what's happening. So once again, all computers are slightly different, but they all contain pretty much some very similar information, okay? Now, it's not gonna read you a lot while you're in override mode. Okay, so what we'll do is first we'll boom up and we will then have a look at the computer and see what it can tell us. Okay, so we've got five levers here. We've got one here for our main hook. We've got one for our headache ball. We've got one to boom in and out, or up and down, I should say in and out and then slew left and right okay on here you'll see a couple of buttons so on your slew your horn is always going to be on the slew okay over here on your um, switches here all right 
what they're going to do is if you're lifting a heavy load, if you hold that um, button in, it's going to activate the free slew. So if you're not quite over the center, if you're holding that button in as you rope it, it so provided the load is heavy enough, it will just um, bring the crane around to the center of the load. Okay, so in order to boom up, all right, well, we've got power, so what we're going to do, all right, we're going to just start booming up. All right. All right. Now, it's a good idea to boom up until you see the bottom of the hooks, okay? If you don't, you may not be past your luff limit and the alarm may continue to sound. Okay, just, let's just activate that again, just so we know what's going on. Okay, so if we have a look, all right, I'm going to rope down my headache ball until it comes off the two block weight. Okay, I'm going to do the same with the main. And then you'll notice the alarms will go off. Okay, now before we check those two blocks, let's have a look at the computer. All right, so over here, all right, the main things we need to concern ourselves with. So at the moment, in the current configuration, I'm good for 8.7 tonne. Okay, so that's the maximum load. Currently we have 300 kilos on there. So that 300 kilos is the weight of your hook blocks. Okay, you've got your revs, you've got your temperature. Okay, you've got your oil pressure. Over here, okay, we've got our boom length. Okay, so our boom length when it's sucked all the way in is 10.5. Our current boom angle here, that's 11.8. And our radius is 8.9 meters. So that means our um, hook block is um, 8.9 meters away from the center of sleep. Okay, so that's critical information you need to know. So we'll keep that in mind. Now we'll go back up here, we'll have a look at our two blocks. So we'll test them individually because we want to make sure they're both working. When it comes up, it should hit the two block and stop hoisting. Okay. You'll also notice the alarm will go off as well. Okay. Okay, so while that alarm's going off, we'll just take a look on the computer here. You can see this red light here. That's telling you that the alarm is going off for the two block. Okay. <coughs> so, once we've got those two blocks checked, what we want to do before we start pushing any boom out is we want to boom up to 70 degrees or well at least 70 degrees between 70 and 75 degrees and that's going to make it a lot easier on the boom to push it in and out um, if you were to have the fly jib on it's a good idea to go even up as high as 78 degrees okay because the lower the boom angle it's going to start flogging out the wear pads inside the boom so whenever you're pushing the boom in or out it's always a good idea to be at least past that 70 degree mark okay so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to boom up and I'm going to keep those hook blocks down low as well. We're going to want some revs. So we'll start booming up. All right. Now, just remember, if you are just learning, all right, you don't need to try and do all three things at once. Oh, it's more a time-saving thing at the moment. But if you boom up, and bring your hooks down right, because what we want is before we start pushing the boom out we want to have both hooks down at eye level okay and when you're doing multiple things at once you want to make sure you give the crane some revs the hydraulic pump is always going to work better with some revs. It doesn't have to be flat out. The number of revs can depend on the number of motions you're doing at the one time too. Okay, so far we're up to 60 degrees. All right. Now, as you start getting close, all right, you start gently easing things off. All right. Let's have a look. Alright. Okay, so 
It doesn't have to be at exactly 70 degrees, but anywhere between 70 and 75 degrees is going to do us just fine. Okay, so what we're going to do, now we've got the boom up at 70 around and just have a look. Okay, so we can see we're at 71.7. So keeping in mind, um, come past 70, going past a little bit, isn't going to do you any harm at all. Now we're going to look at the um, boom length we're going to need. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll bring you around to our load charts. Let's see how well we can have a look there. Okay, so we've got three load charts here. All right, so you can't read it too well. This first third here is with your outriggers fully extended. In the middle, we've got it half extended. And then we've got our fly configurations here. So if we've got 12 meters, okay, and our heaviest load is um, well, just under five and a half ton, all right, what I'll do is I'll go to 12 meters, all right, so you've got 12 meters there. I'll look at the best configuration, so right there. And if you look up, right, you're going to be, you want 24.1 metres of fly, 24.1 uh, metres of boom. Now it's a good idea to always set your boom length to your load charts. That's why, why it's easy to check whether it's reading correctly. You can check it off your computer whether they're both reading correctly. Okay, so now when you're pushing the boom out, main hook, we have four parts of line. So we don't have to touch our hook block as it's going up. It's not going to go up high enough to interfere with anything. The headache ball on the other hand, right, single part of line, it will go up four times faster than the main. Right, so that's going to two block before you get to where you're going. So the best way to avoid that is to keep the hook block, the um, headache ball low as you're pushing it out. Now, the one thing you don't want to do, whenever you're extending the boom or retracting the boom, don't touch the main hook, okay? There's not enough weight in the main hook with those four parts of line to keep weight on the winch while you're pushing it in and out at the same time. Right, you will end up spooling your drum. The best way to avoid that, start with the main hook block low and then push it out. At the end, you can pull it up that last little bit if you need to, okay? If you're pushing it out and you realize you've hit the two block or you're getting close to your two block, don't start roping it out, stop pushing it out, lower the main, and then continue to push it out. Because the last thing you want to do is to spool the winch drums. Okay, so what we'll do is I'll start pushing that boom out and then we will um, keep the, the headache ball down low, all right? And you'll notice the uh, main hook isn't going to go up high enough to bother us. So as it's pushing out, just try and keep that headache ball down and low. Makes it easy to keep an eye on the headache and the computer at the same time. Okay, once they're out, <coughs> because we'll be lifting panels, right, we're obviously going to use the main hook. The um, headache ball is only good for three ton, so we're going to need the main hook. So we'll take that um, headache ball all the way up and we'll bring our main hook down. Okay, let's stop that there. Okay, now that we've got the crane all set up, okay, I just want to go across a couple of little things, the things that are going to catch most people out when they're just beginning. Okay, so 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to slew over here so we're um, in the clear. Okay, now, now that I'm around here, right now, the one thing that's going to catch most people out when they're new to operating is the boom, the boom up, the boom down. All right, you've got to be very gentle with it. Okay, the more boom you've got out, the more it's going to want to try and run away with you. The more weight you've got on it, the more it's going to try and run away from you. The thing about the boom is you want to just be able to crack it, all right, and then you can always increase the speed um, as you need to. But just crack it to start with and then just slowly guide it forward. Okay, what you don't want to do is you don't want to just grab a joystick or a lever and just push it, all right? Things will get pretty nasty pretty quickly. So what I'd, all right, so let's just suck that in a bit. So our boom is the one in the middle. So if I just push that forward ever so slightly, all right, you can hear the hydraulics kick in, okay? And a lot of people, they'll look at that and say, nothing's happening but if we look down here all right you can see that it has cracked and if you look at the boom angle you will notice that it is actually coming down now the other thing to keep in mind the speed of the boom isn't controlled with the um, accelerator it's controlled with the lever so if you've got a fair way to go after you've got it cracked all right very gently keep pushing it forward more all right and you'll notice if we look down here, it's going to start going a lot quicker. All right. Now, as you get close to the radius you want to be, all right, don't just let go of the lever. All right. As you start getting close, all right, just gently ease it back in. All right. Because what you want to do, you want a nice steady start and you want a nice steady stop. Now, what you've got to keep in mind with the boom, the lower that boom gets, the lower the boom gets, um, the quicker it's going to start going. Okay? If you're booming up and you've got a fair radius to start with, you're going to need some revs to lift that big heavy boom up from the start. But as it starts getting higher, it's going to start getting less resistance and it's going to start coming faster. So as you're coming up, all right, so as it starts getting past that heavy stage, just start easing off the accelerator a bit and just start easing up on the lever as well. Okay, keeping in mind the throttle does not control the speed. The levers control the speed, okay? The throttle's there to work the hydraulic pump. Now, if you're lifting something heavy, so the heavy boom, etc., right, it's gonna need some accelerator in order to work those hydraulics. Right? If you're booming down, not so much, okay? So keeping in mind, so if you're booming up again, right, so booming up requires some throttle, more so because it's going against gravity. Right, just crack it again. All right, just crack it. All right, once it starts moving, if you have a look down here, you can see, yes, it is moving. All right, you can just gently bring it back further. All right, remembering its speed is controlled with the lever, all right? And as you come in close, just ease it up. All right. And when it comes to a stop, all right, the hook should be sitting just nice and steady like that. All right. Let's just boom it down again so you get a better view. All right. So, and the next thing I want to have a look at is having a look at a bit of swing in it. All right. I see a lot of um, operators, they can be pretty quick and harsh on the um, levers when there's actually really no need to. All right, so put that down there where we can see it. So what I want to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of a swing in it. All right. The best way to um, catch a swing is not to get a swing in it. All right. But, all right. So when you're getting a swing, wait till it's near the top of the arc, and then just slowly bring the boom over the top of it, just like that. Right. You don't need big sudden movements. All you need to do is gently, as it's getting near the top of the arc, move the boom over the top of it. All right, so I'll do that again just to show you. All right, so 
bit of a swing when it gets near the top of the arc. All right, bring that over the top. All right, once again, all right, bit of a swing. Wait till it gets near the top of the arc and just put the boom head over the top of the hook, all right? No need for these big sudden jerky movements that I see a lot of people doing all the time. Okay, so what we'll do now is if we're at the end of the job, we're going to pack it up. First thing we want to do, we'll take both our hook blocks up and then we'll boom it up to 70 degrees again. Okay, so up we go. Make sure we boom it up to 70 degrees again. Okay, remembering it is a lot better for the wear pads in the boom if you have it past that 70 degree mark. Okay, as I'm booming it up, I'll bring the um, boom back around over the front. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I've taken both hook blocks up. I'm up past 70 degrees. So now I'm gonna start sucking the boom in. I don't have to worry about the main hook and I don't want to touch the main hook as it's coming in. So I will just worry about the headache ball. So I'll start sucking it in. Oh, and hopefully you can see in the camera over there the difference between how quick the headache ball will come down as opposed to the main hook. All right, as it gets too low, I'll start pulling up on the headache ball. All right, all the way in, I'm at 10 and a half meters. Okay, so when you're learning, the best way to do it now is take hill blocks up and then start booming down. All right, I'm just going to speed things up a bit, I'm just going to do it all at once. So I'm going to boom down and rope up. Now because I'm just going to be hanging them over the front, I don't have to worry too much. All right, if I was attaching them to the front, all right, then you'd stop at a specific radius, you'd get, you'd know each machine individually, you'd drop it down, you'd attach the hooks, all right, and then you can continue to boom down and rope up, keeping a little bit of tension on those hooks, all right? So, but because I'm just hanging over the front, what I'll do is I'll just bring it down until it hits my luff limit switch, because I don't want to listen to the reps. All right. Now I have an override key here. I'm going to turn that first, and I'm going to pull up my headache ball. You've got to be very gentle, because you don't want to put it into your rooster sheep. All right. It's about so high. Bring up the main. All right, I'll just turn that off for a sec. On a lot of cranes, they may have a setup mode, so you don't have an override key. If ever you're in setup mode, be very careful because you've got to remember that you can go through those two blocks without setting off an alarm, depending on the crane you're driving. So when you're at this stage, all right, in order to do anything, I'm going to need to turn this key. All right, but before I do, I want to make sure that I am lined up. All right, so make sure everything's nice and square. I'll turn the key and then I will start booming down. All right, I'll get nice and close and I just adjust my slew that little touch and then put it down into the cradle. Alright, I'll turn the power off in the top cab um, because I'm still going to need the engine running in order to pack it up. Essentially that's the process of doing your pre-starts, right? you do your post-operational checks, then you make sure everything's nice and level, make sure it's set up nice and even, lift the boom out of the cradle, check your hoist limit switches, boom it up to past 70 degrees, Bring your hooks down and then start pushing it out to the desired boom length. Okay, I think that just about covers for what we're going to do today and it looks like I'm about to get wet very shortly. So keep tuned and we'll try and get a few more videos up there soon. Okay, thanks for your time.